1415 saw one of the most famous battles in medieval history and there's a car coming so I look yeah. Starting off the news this week, some more developments on the presence of methane on Mars. A couple of months ago, the European-Russian team behind the Trace Gas Orbiter, or TGO, announced it had found no traces of methane on the Red Planet whatsoever, contrary to the findings of NASA's Curiosity rover. This led to questions about the reliability of both pieces of equipment. This week, however, NASA has announced that Curiosity has recorded the largest concentration of methane ever recorded on Mars. The reason that so many people are so interested in methane on Mars is that on Earth, a large amount is produced by living organisms, although it's worth noting that geological processes are also capable of producing methane and that the methane levels on Earth are far larger than that on Mars. For comparison, the methane levels on Earth are 1,865 parts per billion, or PPB, and the levels detected by Curiosity on Mars were 21 PPB. In other news, meteorologists from three US forecasters have sent a joint letter to the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, to warn against the use of 5G communication in relation to how it could affect weather prediction systems. They say the possible widespread use of 5G networks at their frequency could pose danger to many who would be affected by a hazardous weather event like a hurricane. In the lead-up to its public release and since, 5G has attracted much criticism in relation to its possible impact on public safety and health. Also this week, a study was published that identified the first example of a hybrid between a narwhal and a beluga. The paper, published in the journal Nature, describes how DNA sequencing was used on the skull originally collected in 1990 for the Natural History Museum of Denmark. This specimen was already suggested to be from a hybrid animal, since the physical structure of the skull seemed to be intermediate between the two species, and this study now confirms, using DNA sequencing, that it did indeed belong to a male individual that had a narwhal mother and a beluga father. It also appears to have had a different feeding strategy in life compared to the other two species, and the confirmation of the hybrid helps to develop our understanding of these animals, as well as illustrating how important museum collections are. In paleontology news this week, an interesting discovery to do with the causes of the Cambrian explosion has been made. This period of the evolution of life occurred when complex organisms appear to have quickly diversified, and it is thought that an oxygenation event sometime between 850 and 541 million years ago was one of the main causes. This new study suggests that due to the formation of the supercontinent Gondwana, which resulted in increasing degassing of CO2 from sedimentary rocks, there was an increase in the CO2 concentration of the atmosphere. As a consequence, the planet warmed, and there was more weathering of rocks, which meant more phosphorus went into the oceans, so a greater amount of photosynthesis could occur. This then led to an increase in oxygen concentrations to levels that allowed the Cambrian explosion to take place. And finally, we welcome a new genus and species of theropod dinosaur this week. Found in Cretaceous rocks in South Brazil, this animal, named Vespasaurus paranaensis, was a type of theropod known as Noasaurine, which are actually fairly rare. This new species was about one meter in length, and unusually, it may have walked on just one toe, being functionally monodactyl and bearing most of its weight on a single digit. Vespasaurus was also found in rocks that indicate it once inhabited a desert environment. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to learn more about this world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds you. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.